It's that time again, the election 2019, where, where we are required to vote. Do you vote left? Do you vote right? Um, is it House of Representatives, Senate, Senate, what's going on? Is it ScoMo? Is it Bill? I mean, which one do you go for? What I want to talk to you about in this video is how I vote and why I vote as a Christian and how important it is that Christians are engaged. We must engage with what's happening in our culture out in the marketplace and casting your vote the right way is the best way to do it. So why do I vote as a Christian and why do I take it seriously? Well, first and foremost, because I am a political animal, as Aristotle said, it's, I mean, it's in my bones. Everyone, every citizen is part of his city, part of his nation. And I vote because I wanna be involved in my nation and in my city. Yes, I'm a citizen of another place, heaven, Yes, I'm from the city of God, not the city of man, but I live here on the earth right now, and I vote because I wanna cast my vote in a way that's gonna affect my nation. Jesus said, give unto Caesar what is Caesar, and God what is God's. This is our opportunity. We spend our whole life serving the Lord, but this is our opportunity to give to Caesar, to influence the political realm, what's going on inside of our nation, and to, by using our vote well. As Christians, we must take responsibility for our nation, and voting is one of the best ways to do it. That's why I think through my vote very caref carefully. Finally, I vote because I wanna keep the state and the political system accountable. I wanna keep them accountable to what I believe, to the things of God, and this is my opportunity to do that. Yes, the state and the church should be separate, but the, church, the reason that they should be separate is so that the church and the people of God can keep the state honest, can keep the state moral. The church should be the conscience of this nation, and so the people of God in this time need to use their vote well, and that's why I take this very seriously. I wanna to talk to you about three principles that every Christian should consider and weigh before they vote. I'm not gonna to talk to you about which party to vote for, the blue team or the red team, but principles that we should look at and we should value as Christians. The first one is the prime minister as father, well, in this coming election, because we've got two men as the head of each party. Are they going to father the nation? That's a critical question that I weigh when I look at the person who could become our prime minister. God is a father in heaven, and thank goodness for that. You know, he treats us with, with, with discipline and truth, but he also treats us with unconditional love. And that is an incredibly important balance that you wanna see in a leader. It's like the father of a home called to lead a home and a family. You wanna see a balanced leader there of a balanced in truth and love. And it's the same with the leader of our nation. You want someone who's gonna father the nation, father us in times of crisis, take us forward with a vision, lead us with a strong hand when we need to be led that way. You don't want some whimsical leader, some immature leader, someone that's just gonna take us off into ideologies and, and popularism. You want someone who's gonna lead like a dad. The second principle to consider is that only righteousness will exalt Australia. We know Proverbs 14 tells us that. Uh, Proverbs 11 tells us that when the righteous um, are blessed or the upright are blessed, the city rejoices. Righteousness is critical. And that doesn't mean we need a leader who's a, or a prime minister who's a born again Christian, but we do want a man or a woman of God uh, in, in our political parties who uphold righteousness, who fear the Lord, who live by kingdom values. And I'm gonna vote for the person who aligns with the kingdom values and what I read in the word of God. Someone who's in right standing before God. I know as a Christian that if we're not in right standing before God and with someone leading our nation or if our nation itself is in sin, then it's gonna only lead us to destruction because the wages of sin is death. So think about, consider, weigh, who, which party, which leader, uh, which local candidate is standing for things of righteousness and values that are kingdom values that you believe in as well. The third principle to consider when choosing who to vote for is does that person, does that party value life? You know, God is a God of life. He's, he, he breathed life into mankind. Jesus rose from the dead. We've just had Easter. He came back to life. Christianity is all about life. It's about building up. It's about flourishing. It's about uh, preservation. It's about restoring things back to the best that they can be. 
you know, we live in a culture at the moment where there's, 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 there's so much death coming at us, abortion, uh, euthanasia, there's so much um, separation, disunity, hatred, all these kind of things are death and, and death related. You've got to vote for someone or z vote for a party that wants to build up, that wants to encourage, that wants to see things flourish, economic flourishing, social flourishing. And of, of course, I don't mean flourishing by compromising the word of God, but I mean flourishing in the shalom way, in, in the God-given way, the way that the kingdom comes with truth, but it brings blessing and flourishing for all people. So make sure that who you vote for is choosing life, believes in life, and wants all things to flourish and grow. So I encourage you as you consider your vote, there's a lot of moral issues on the table in this upcoming election. And although the moral issues might not be the thing that sway the election, as a Christian, these are the things that should concern us the most. Things to do with life and death, like abortion, euthanasia, things to do with freedoms, like freedom of religion, freedom of speech. These are things that we really need to consider because they dictate our moral future as a nation. I encourage you before you vote to, to look at a good analysis of the different policies from the different parties. I know the Australian Christian Lobby and other such groups um, put out um, information uh, leading into every election. I, I can link below a website that you can look at. So weigh what the parties will vote for uh, against our orthodox Christian beliefs and, and there's plenty of documents where you can see that. In the last election here in Victoria, I voted uh, Liberal because I knew that they were going to struggle and I wanted to help. Uh, didn't get as far. We had another Labor government. The last election, I think I voted Family First because I wanted to vote for a smaller party. Sometimes it's really important to vote for smaller parties. It helps send a message, especially in the Senate, um, for, for what you're standing for. Um, so consider your vote carefully. I think for myself, um, the the... The, at the House of Representatives level, I'll probably vote Liberal because I really like ScoMo and what he stands for and who he is. And I think he is a great father and can lead our nation in that way. At the Senate, I'm probably leaning towards a smaller party, maybe the Australian Conservatives or something like that, because the Senate um, really keeps the House of Representatives or the government um, accountable. And that's a, where a lot more um, power can be disseminated to smaller groups to, to have a voice. So. Engage with politics, engage with the city, engage with our culture, use your vote well, uh, consider it prayerfully, bring it to the Lord and uh, get involved coming into this election. And let's believe for God to continue to bless and prosper and raise up this great nation of Australia. Let's get the message out there.